Welcome to Explore. We are here at the Tidemark Theatre in Campbell River, and we are very honoured. We have a very special guest with us today, Dr. Evelyn Voyager. Dr. Evelyn, please, if you could start by sharing with us your journey and how you started, where you started, and how you ended up at North Island College. Mm -hmm. Well, my journey, I guess I'll start with my education. Before that, I was raised at home. I was uh, raised with my parents, my loving parents, my grandparents, and everybody. Um, then at the age of going on to 10, that's when we were forced into the residential school. Oh, okay. I am very thankful for the first 10 years of my life that I was at home mm -hmm. and knew, learned my culture and all that. Then, we, then I said we were forced into the residential school. I'm not going to talk about everything, but I'm going to put in maybe years. Like I was in a school for six years um, in the Alert Bay residential school. And <clears throat> they didn't encourage us to be educated. They were doing was they were going to take away the Indianness out of us, right. so we were put there, and when you reached age sixteen or grade eight, you were booted out of there. Okay. No longer able to educate us, so that's when I went home. And during those years, I uh, I was in Kingcom. And then got married and had three children. And um, the children's father passed away. So, but I didn't want to live, a, live on welfare the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So what I did then, I knew that I had to do something. So I started taking correspondence. This time, the government had changed their mind and said, oh, we can educate them a little higher. So they started encouraging us to go back to school, okay. which was not there before. Mm -hmm. So I started taking correspondence and got up to my grade 10. Then I applied to go to school in Victoria for the BC vocational. And <clears throat> I put my two older ones in the school and then got... Um, my cousin to look after my baby while I went to school. And I took up, um, took up uh, licensed practical nursing. That wow. was my um, first education. And decided I really liked it. And mm -hmm. then I um, started to see things in, in the native, I guess my eyes got open to how First Nations people were treated in this white world, you yes. know. But I, before I go on, I want to thank um, a friend of mine. She's still a good friend today. She lives in Victoria, and she took me under her wing when mm. I went to cultural culture shock. You yes. know, very different raised in a small community, having to go to Victoria. But yes. she was there for me, and I'm always thankful for people like her right. who helped us, who made it a bit easier for us, you know. <clears throat> so that's how I started going further with my education was I began to work in the hospitals and began to see, well, my people really need people that know and understand them. Mm -hmm. So I decided I was going to go further. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But before I, while I was, um, I'll tell you my story while I was doing my practical nurses training. The principal took me aside 
the BC Vocational School in Victoria, he took me aside and he said, uh, you know, Evelyn, you got many strikes against you. Mm -hmm. One is your, you have to prove you can do this, you can uh, graduate from this course. And number, another one is your nationality. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say this, but there are many people who are racist. Right. And two of my best teachers are very racist. Really? I'm sorry to say that, but they oh. are. They are very racist. So I went to school knowing them, but uh, luckily for me, <clears throat> there was a colored girl in my class. Okay. So they picked on her more than they picked on me. Wow. And she became my best friend because we're two outsiders. You know? Yes, of course. But they did pick on her more and she cried many times. But we got through, we graduated, and I, that's when I knew that nursing was something I really liked because I won, I was awarded um, <clears throat> the best uh, bedside manner. So that was what I was, but before that, I had been awarded by the Department of Indian Affairs because I did very well in my upgrading and I was awarded, I was given another award then too. But as I started to work in the hospitals, I wanted, I was craving to go back and work with my people. Yes, okay. And that's when sometime I had met um, my husband then, whom I was gonna marry and him and I moved to v Vancouver to live there after. And, and got upgraded. I wanted to become an RN. I wanted to go back and work with my people. And they weren't gonna do that if you're just an LPN. So I went and took my grade 10 and 12, 11, 12, 11 and 12, in uh, King Ed in Vancouver. Okay. And that's when I, I got my grade, able to get into my, RN training. Okay. Where did you do your RN training? I did, I started in Douglas, uh, no, uh, Langara. Langara College? Langara College. Okay. I went there for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Then lo and behold, I was um, failed again, running to racism. Wow. And guess what she failed me on? Bedside manner. Yes. <laughs> That's what she failed me on. Unbelievable. And the dean, I can still remember the dean, very nice lady. She said to me, you know, Evelyn, I did everything I could to keep you on. But she was very adamant she was going to get you out. So. Wow. I failed there. Well, I knew in my heart I could do it. Yes. I knew that I had it in me. So one morning I was reading the newspaper and it said, calling all LPNs to come and do a challenge exam by Douglas College come and do a challenge exam to see how much more you need it to become an RN. Okay. <clears throat> so I went and I registered. Yeah. <laughs> registered. Yeah. And the day of the exam, I believe I had the flu and was so sick, feeling sick. And I was trying to phone them and say, I can't come. Can I do it another day? But of course, it's in August, and everybody's got 
you know, taking time off and just right. come in when they have to come. So I went and wrote it. Wow. Yeah, about a hundred of us. And uh, I guess one of the floor walkers, you know how they <laughs> really watch you when you're test, doing tests. She came over and she could see I wasn't well. Would you like to go sit outside for a while? So her and I went and sat outside and got fresh air. Then I came back and finished and I would reread some of them I didn't even a remember answering. <laughs> huh? But when I got the call and I was told by the, from the call, you are one of the top 10. Wow. So that's how I got my RN. Okay. And I'm going to say thank the creator for schools like Douglas College. Yes. Because the teachers were different. Yep. They were very approachable. Yes. Very caring. And in fact, they would ask us, well, how do you learn best, Evelyn? And not only me, but to the other students. Okay. And then I said to the one that asked me, well, I learned by watching, by experience. Right. And then she would come in with all kinds of things to show us, yes. especially biology, you know. Yes. So that's how I got my Your RN. RN all right. through Douglas College. Okay. Well, we are going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we will find out what came next. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You are watching Explore. We are coming to you from the Tidemark Theatre in the city of Campbell River. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Explore. Our guest today is Dr. Evelyn Voyager. Evelyn, you've got your RN by challenging the exam at Douglas College. What came next for you? I went to work for the government. Okay. And it really opened my eyes that I didn't fully understand the people I was working with. Mm. <clears throat> that is the First Nations people. Right. And I began to ask questions, and I began to really find out what happened to my people through colonization and all that. And I knew that I needed to study more. Okay. I went for my BA in Victoria, and I went for my master's in Seattle. Oh, okay. And what was your bachelor's in? My bachelor's was in nursing. In nursing? Yes. And then what about your master's? It in was in psychology. Psychology. And that was in Seattle? Yes. Okay. In John Baster University. Okay. And the reason why I took master's I, in uh, psychology was because my experience in working with my people was that I learned the problems with First Nations is not all physical. Correct. It isn't. So I needed to know their whole outlook on what happened to them. Right. I needed to know that, and that's why I went into psychology, because I learned the more I heard, the more I questioned, and the answers that were coming was, we lost who we were. Right. We lost our identity. Mm -hmm. So that's what I needed to work on. Fully understand, fully understand the loss 
and what needed to be done to help them. That's why I went into um, psychology. And then from there, where did you do your doctorate? In the, I did it by distance, Iowa. Oh, okay. It was a seniors university, international university. Okay. Somebody um, told me I could do this and that I didn't have to go there and that, and that there was a person who worked with all the students located in uh, Richmond. And I went to see him because I wanted to do it. And that's how I did it. Did it. And okay. again, it was in, in uh, psychology. Okay. Um, my dissertation was is uh, <clears throat> loss of identity through colonization, mm -hmm. Christianity, oppression, who am I? Because that's what I learned in my work with my people, in asking questions, that many of them lost their identity right. because we were forced to live as non-natives right. in the residential school, even in the day schools and what the church taught us. Mm -hmm. That's why I wanted to do that. And, and I can honestly say it helped me to understand what happened. Okay. And even today, I know that's what everybody needs to know right. in order to work with effectively with First Nations people. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I know that a few years ago, I believe it was under the current Liberal government, under Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, where they did acknowledge that it was actually a genocide. Um, and so that acknowledgement has been made. Has that acknowledgement been followed through in your eyes with action to help with the decolonization? I'm going to say no. Okay. Maybe in certain areas, mm -hmm. but not as a whole. Okay. Like when um, Harper first apologized. Right. I'm going to say it was only words. Right. It did not fil filter out to the world, to Canada, to do it. Right. And I'm saying it's the same with Trudeau. Okay. He, he hasn't lived up to the promises mm -hmm. that he made when he was campaigning. Right. They haven't. Um, he keeps saying it's going to happen, but it hasn't. There are people up there, up north, who are boiling water for 25 years. Right. Imagine that. 25 Five years. years. They've had to boil water, water in order to drink it. Yeah. So, no, I wouldn't, I'm not going to say that it's been done. It hasn't. It hasn't. And in your position as an elder in the community with all of your decades of life experience, over the last few years, we've heard discussion by the experts, quote in quotes, between the word reconciliation and decolonization. What is your view of that discussion? It, that's all it is, it's just a discussion. Okay. It has not been um, practiced. It's gonna take a lot more than words. Mm -hmm. Things have to change. Like, I go to the high schools, too, and do speaking engagements. Right. And some of the students have never even heard of the residential school. Hmm. Some of them have. I've got um, two piles of letters from the students thanking me for going, taking my time, to go and explain to them what happened to us. Mm -hmm. Some of us have never heard of it. And they thank me and they want to learn more. Right. 
And I know that's what it's going to take. Right. The education system has to change. Right. It has to include the history of the First Nations people. Right. It hasn't. I have a granddaughter who's uh, 43 now, but when she was 14, she said, come with, a, come with me, she said to her grandpa and I. <clears throat> we went and um, we had no idea what she was going to do. I'm going to go speak to the principal. So we went with her and she had two sheets and one was hardly anything on one, one was the law. She said to the principal, this is what you have on First Nations, on their history, very little. And this is what you have on all the other nations in the world. Why? Right. Why can't we as First Nations people get credits for sitting in our big houses, learning our culture. Mm -hmm. You give credits for people who go on sports. Right. You give credits to people who learn the music, mm -hmm. but there's nothing about us. Right. Then she went to the school board in Port Hardy. Then she went to the tribal councils. And that's then they changed a bit. They started putting uh, principles in place for First Nations. In the, they started right. with Port Hardy. They put in a principle. Mm -hmm. I think Flora Cook was the first one. Okay. And, and, and I don't know what they do in Campbell, but I know in, uh, in Co Comox, um, Bruce is the principal for all the First Nations people. Right. That was the work of my granddaughter. The, a man awesome. who worked in um, with the school board said, you made them think, Carla, yes. that this is your work. And she's still doing that today. She's mm -hmm. still doing. But the education system has to change. The teachings of nurses, doctors, whatever, mm -hmm. has to include the history, right. has to include so that we can fully understand them. Right. You cannot do a good job unless you really know your clients, right. know them and make, build a relationship with them. Right. You cannot do a good job. I learned that. I learned that myself mm -hmm. because I used to say my people were not smart. I used to say, how could they live like that? Why are they alcoholics and dr drunks? Why do they live like that? Why aren't they prepared for this? Why aren't they doing this? I asked those questions. But once I studied and learned to really listen to them, yes. I learned yeah. how to work with them best. Right. I never go into a community and say, you're going to do this because I know best. Right. I listen to them. Right. I listen and hear what they're saying. And then I said, well, how would you like us to do this for you? You know, mm -hmm. always, always asking questions and never saying, you're going to do this because I know better. Right. Because that's what happens with the other nurses and doctors that come into our communities. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to take a short break. Uh, you are watching Explore, and we are here at the Tidemark Theater in the city of Campbell River. I'm Mary Ruth Snyder. I'm the executive director for the Campbell River and District Chamber of Commerce, and our guest today is Dr. Evelyn Voyager, and we will be right back. This is my habitat house. My parents helped build it. Now we don't get wet when it rains. I don't get too hot or too cold inside. And I don't have to worry when the winds blow. This is my house. This is my house. This is my house. My house. My house. I can play with my sister. I can play with my brother. I can play with my mother, my father, my family. My family. My family. This is my house. This is my house. I can study. I can be safe with my family. 
This is my house. This is my house. My house. My house. This is my house. Find out how you can help more families like mine have a safe, decent place to call home. Welcome back to Explore. Our guest today is Dr. Evelyn Voyager. Evelyn, you are have been an elder in residence at North Island College, and you are one of the professors at North Island College. What is the thing about your work with the students that you enjoy the most? Mm -hmm. I enjoy teaching them about our culture, about our way of life, and enjoy seeing them really learn. Some of them have said, I have transformed mm. all because of us in being inclusive of the First Nations culture. Right. We even take them to the villages. We take them one year to Kinkum, one year to Rivers. Okay. And many of them have really enjoyed it. Now, I enjoy teaching them what was, what our t own teachings were. Mm -hmm. And I've been there going on to 17 years now. Wow. Yeah. Is there a growing understanding amongst the students of the intergenerational trauma that has transpired with the First Nation people? Very much, very much. And that has helped them, okay. helped them in their work. Like I I hear from the people where they're working, in the villages. Yeah. I hear from their clients mm -hmm. what good nurses they are, what okay. they're so understanding. They're really able to listen to us, you know? Okay. And so I know that it has made an impact. And just in October, the fourth year students mm -hmm. had a con um, conference. Yes. It was uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba West, the Western uh, Nurses um, Students Conference. Okay. And you know what they titled their conference? No. Uplifting Indigenous Voices. Oh, I lovely. just about cried when they told me, this is what we're doing, this is what we're doing, and we want you to be our keynote speaker. Wonderful. So I so know. So there's a shift. It is. Okay. Unfortunately, the nursing program is the only program in NIC that's fully aboard for the TRC. Okay. What would you like to see occur in society to continue to make that shift? Do you want to see reconciliation or do you want to see actual decolonization where the First Nations become respected for who they are with complete integration and power over their own destinies? Very much so. I would love to see that in our health, in our education. Mm -hmm. And I work a lot with health people too. Yes. And they're asking us to make um, job descriptions for positions that come up. Oh, but interesting. We don't have the final say. They take it to Victoria right. and, and, uh, the powers of being will say yea or nay. Well, I said to them, to the lady who said of it, no, mm. you are going to make them pass this. They no longer can tell us what our people need. We know she's native, she's native, she's native, I'm native, and we have put this together. Right. It has to come from people who understand. Yes. Understand. We could no longer... Do your policies, and I would love to see the education system, the whole education system change, okay. to be very inclusive mm -hmm. of the other. 
right. not only First Nations, but all the other nationalities right. in our world. Right. That is my dream. I have been asked, especially when I turned 80, and they had a big party for me, and they said, are you retiring? I said, no, not till my work is done. Right. And that is what I would love to see, okay. that everything changes to be inclusive and that they listen and implement some of the traditional way of being because it was very healthy. Yes. It was very healthy. Okay. I can go on and on about <laughs> it, but I'm not going to. Be, be. Someday I hope I will. Yeah. But um, that is my dream. Okay. Well, that is an excellent place to end this interview on a high note with your dream. And I share that dream. I, I share that dream. So thank you so very much for spending the time with us today. We very much appreciate your presence here. Thank you. Bela Kessler. You have been watching Explore. From the Tidemark Theatre in the city of Campbell River, please join us again.